hello guys welcome back to take dose and in this video we will understand scalability let us take a real life example of a ticket counter in a ticket counter uh, there is a queue of people standing in line and uh, let's say this is the expected load where three people are standing in a queue so the more the number of people standing in a queue if you have a single counter then the time taken to process each of the request will increase that is the waiting time for each person will increase now let's say that at some point of time there is a high influx of people so the line length will increase and so the waiting time for people will increase if you have a single counter so what is changing in between these two situations the change is the waiting time because of the increasing length of the queue and if a single person is present in the counter then simply he is processing the request at the same pace per person now the quality of service will be good if the load is as per expectation or if the load is low but if the load is high then the quality of service will be poor because of the waiting time right therefore how satisfied will be the customers so whoever is standing in line if they get served within time then they will feel good otherwise if the time taken is longer then they will not feel good about it right so the quality of service will decrease if you have a higher load with same single counter now what is the solution in this case there can be multiple solution for it one solution can be you replace this person with a person who may be faster so that the number of people per second or per minute which uh, they serve is actually increasing otherwise what you can do in a simple way we do like we increase the number of counter so you have counter 1 and counter 2 now so three people can move to counter 1 and the rest three people can move to counter 2 and so parallelly multiple people can be served so in this way uh, we are actually increasing the capacity so the quality of service will be maintained to be good similarly uh, we can take an example of a computer system let's say that uh, we have a server where you have 8 gb of ram 1 tb of hard disk and 2 core processor and uh, it can serve the request from the user and uh, when it serves it then it will respond with the result let's assume that whatever work the server is doing uh, it can take a maximum request of 1000 request per second so it can process 1000 request per second now let's look at the top right corner where a graph is made which is request per second versus timestamp now the time unit can be days minutes hours whatever you can assume and request per second are in uh, units of 1000 so 1 means 1000 2 means 2000 you can see that whatever plot is being shown sometimes the request is increasing beyond 1k the request is very high for some time and then for some time the request is very low that means the load is low right now depending on our need if you know that the maximum capacity of our system is 1000 request per second when the request rise above 1000 then this system will not be able to serve this request so the request will be dropped off and the quality of service will decrease now in this kind of situation we need to uh, increase the either the capacity of the system that is the first uh, thing to do or in the second thing we can increase the number of systems like in our ticket counter example if we would replace a inefficient person with a more, more efficient person uh, then actually it is as good as saying that we are increasing the capacity of this system right so from 8 gb ram i can just make it 4x to 32 gb ram from 1 tb hard disk to 4 tb and from 2 core processor to 8 core processor system this is uh, increasing the efficiency of the same system this is one way in the another example of the ticket counter what we did was we were increasing the number of ticket counter keeping the person efficiency same so in this case as well uh, keeping the system same we can just add more systems so if we can add four more systems it will be very similar in its functionality and hence it can take four times the load so both these approaches are good if you are increasing the capacity of the system this is known as vertical scaling and if you add up more systems one after another then this is known as horizontal scaling we will discuss about it in a later video but we must have understood that whenever you are increasing the capacity of your existing system then you are actually scaling the system that means you are scaling up okay now whenever the uh, request decreases let's say it is significantly decreasing below 1k 
then keeping these many resources with you is not a good idea. So what we will do is we will remove them from our system and maybe it will be assigned to some other job which is running elsewhere. So maybe this is just job one where you are getting these many requests as it is shown in the graph. There may be other jobs, job two, job three and so on, uh, which are from other users, which is also running. So if you keep all these systems, all the resources with you, and if you have low number of requests, then actually you are wasting up the resources. Therefore, you will decrease the number of resources when it is not getting used, when it is not required. So this is known as scaling down when you are removing resources. Therefore, uh, what is the uh, goal of the scalable system? The goal is it can handle rapid changes to the workloads and the user demands. So if uh, the number of users are increasing and you have to serve higher load, then we will add resources. And uh, this is known as scaling up. Now, when the number of users are significantly lower, then we will not waste up the resources but instead we will remove the resources so that it can be utilized by some other jobs running and hence we are removing the resources and this is known as scaling down the system. Now I hope you have understood the scalable system. So what is scalability? It is nothing but just the measure of how well you can scale a system. That means the measure of how well the system responds to the changes by adding or removing the resources to meet the demands. That is how well you can scale up and scale down the system based on the fluctuating requirements. Are you ready to take your programming skills to the next level? Well, you are at the right place. Welcome to our data structures and algorithms live interview training program, Interview Dose. Get ready to dive deep into the world of efficient coding and problem solving. In Interview Dose, you will get a solid understanding of key data structures such as array, stack, queue, heap, trees. And along with that, you will also master powerful algorithms based on maths, geometry, graph, and dynamic programming. What sets Interview Dose apart from other courses is the live interactive format. You won't just be watching the pre-recorded sessions but you will join me along with other passionate learners in real time where we will be covering the concepts together. Imagine having the opportunity to ask questions, engage in discussion and collaborate with your fellow learners. It's a supportive community where we all grow together. But it doesn't stop there. We will dive into hands-on coding exercises solving real-world problems. And you will get to work with the interview assignments that will showcase your newfound expertise. Taking interview dose has already been a game changer for a lot of students and working professionals. It didn't just help them to improve their coding skills but also boosted their confidence for tackling complex problems. The live interactive sessions make all the difference. Unlock your coding potential by taking the first step forward. Contact us on WhatsApp for more details. Please like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to get more of such system design videos. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.